What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master One and welcome to my former building guide for this month's former revival of Fallen Julia, Dancer Eldigan, Lachesis and Etlin. We're gonna be having skills up to the Emblem Marth and Lumera banner, so it is gonna be including Potent 4, Attack Speed Scowl and also Attack Defense Bulwark. And again, I wanna remind you that you should be playing on Chamber 25 if you wanna get the best skills because it is gonna be guaranteeing the Tier 4 skills in your passives and let us begin with Fallen Julia, so she should be getting a Weapon Refine in a few months because we are getting a Weapon Refine for Fallen Male Corrin and she was in the same banner so it is not going to be that far away and she does have her preferred weapon in Dark Scripture which is not really the greatest weapon now as it does give you minus 3 attack, doesn't even have minus and special cooldown so Emblem Marth is definitely going to be helpful unless she ends up getting that in her Weapon Refine and then if she's not next to an ally, then she can inflict minus 6 attack and resistance debuff on the foe. And if they don't have any kind of dragon effective damage, then she gets a guaranteed follow up attack. So this weapon could get some more defensive effects. And she does come with an exclusive slot B skill in light and dark. So unlike Legendary Julia, she's not going to be getting an update on this. And this skill is going to be getting outclassed by the other options because just nullifying the visible buffs of the enemies is not enough. You also need to pierce the damage reduction. And it's definitely going to be facing competition from the other slot B skills. So it is going to be a bit of a refine gamble because if you get the skills that she ends up getting in the refine, then your pharma is not going to be aging the best. So you'll have to take that gambit. And if you're going to be building her up, then Flare is the best special that you can get. Emblem Marth is going to be making Flare into a 2 cooldown special. And then you're going to be running attack resistance finish so that you can get the healing and true damage. And it is going to be having good synergy with the null guard in the tempo skill. And you can also get Fire Flood Boost 3 for the Guard Effect. But if she ends up getting Guard Effect in her Weapon Refine, then Fire Flood is not going to be aging the best. Still Water could also be run if you feel like you don't have enough resistance. But even without Still Water, I do think that she can run the Ploy Skills. And then in the slot B, you need something for the Damage Reduction Piercing. So you can run Attack Resistance Tempo 4. So that way you can get the full Tempo Effect and also get 50% Damage Reduction Piercing on the enemy. You can even run Magical Null Follow Up if you don't end up getting Tempo Skill, but Tempo is basically the best lobby skill you can get. Special Spiral is also something you can run so that you can loop uh, Flare or even Iceberg, and it is going to be giving you true damage. And then in the slots, you can run Attack Resistance Ploy 3 because it is going to be making productive use out of her resistance, and you can get debuffs and also disable the grand strategy and bonus doubler status of the enemies. So this is going to be the main build I'm going to be recommending and hopefully this can age well with her weapon refine. Dancer Eldigan is a popular merch project being a free to play dancer and he also has applications in Aetherate's defense where in the dark season he could be used as an anti Mila dancer. Unfortunately he has fallen off a bit when it comes to that because Mila has got a really good weapon refine where she has got better defense now so it's kind of hard to dodge the isolation of optimized Milas and it's not going to be as easy as it used to be before even if you run something like Wagasa Plus. And because he's a free to play dancer a lot of people do have him at plus and merge so this could be the chance of updating him with some premium scales and if you don't really care too much about Aetherate's defense or the competitive use then you can just get this general build. So Kumo Naginata is going to be enabling warping which does free up your sacred seal from running aerobatics or flyer formation so it's a pretty good weapon that you can get. There's not a lot of premium lances that are going to be out there but Kumo Naginata is still going to be useful and make sure to get no quarter because it's a damage reduction piercing special and if you give him Arcane Xiang from Rearmed Alfred then he's going to be able to retaliate back with no quarters that completely pierce the damage reduction of the enemies. So it's definitely a premium special you should be getting and then in the slot A unfortunately there are not too many options it's either attack defense unity or attack defense clash and unity is going to be good for stacking up the bulk and it does have the good synergy with the warping that he can get out of his weapon. And then for the slot B, it depends on your use case and your personal preference. So Rock Slide Dance is a bit more rare than Firestorm Dance because Firestorm Dance is going to be present in Divine Codes 5. So you can give the dodge status to the target ally with Rock Slide Dance and also get Kanto 1 at the same time on your Eldigan. And Guard Bearing 4 could also be an option if you do plan on giving him Arcane Xiang and you want to use him defensively for eating up some hits. Wings of Mercy 4 is always going to be an option on a Dancer. And Aerial Maneuvers is also an option that you can run to extend your range. And it does work out with Arcane Xiang. And in Slot C, Soaring Guidance is going to be the main skill which is going to be giving you Warping. 
and also half an elf follow up to your infantry and flying units. And if you use more armor units than guidance for, is going to be the option. And if you're going to be building him up more from the perspective of Etherate's defense, then this is the build that you can run. Now, like I said before, he's not as good as he used to be in Etherate's defense because Mila just gets more visible defense. So Adlad Lance can be the weapon of choice as it does give you more stats along with Soaring Guidance to your allies. And again, no quarter is something you should be getting on your former Eldigan. In Slaughter, you can run Solid Ground because it is going to be giving you visible defense and it's a pretty rare skill and it certainly helps you against dodging isolation of many of the unoptimized Millas. So it can help you in Aetherade's defense and Aerial Maneuvers is definitely going to be the skill of choice for Aetherade's defense as it does allow you to extend your range by warping and it is really good for a dancer, especially in Aetherade's defense. You can also run Wings of Mercy 4 if you want to and Firestorm Dance is also an option. Rock Slide Dance isn't really all that good for Aetherade's defense and the Desperation status from Firestorm Dance is a lot more useful. Dancer Lachesis is a green dagger flyer who can function as a dancer with her high resistance and can definitely make use of many of these skills and weapons that can support you by debuffing and using her resistance productively. So if you're going to be getting her, you're not going to be able to get Arcane Void. So Tamari is pretty much the main support dagger that she wants to run so that she can debuff the opponent's attack and speed. And you definitely want to get Lethality as a premium special. Still Water is going to be the best Lottie option with the kinds of skill we're going to be running and her resistance is good enough for that. But if you just want to get the Flame Terrain, then Flare Mirror is also going to be an option. In Slot B, I would recommend Sabotage Attack Resistance even though it does overlap with the debuffs uh, that we're already doing. But still, it does give you the Sabotage status on the foe. And if you run her with Arcane Void in the future, you're still going to be able to debuff the opponent's attack in a way. So it does help. And being a dancer, Wings of Mercy 4 is always something you can run. And you can also run Rock Slide Dance or Fire Storm Dance, depending on your personal preference. For Slot C, I would recommend having a Ploy skill. And Defender Ploy is going to be enabling you to debuff all stats of the enemies with Tamari Dagger. So it's a really good option for supporting your allies. But if you want more of the warping sort of support, then Soaring Guidance and Guidance 4, as per usual, are going to be the options. Finally, we have got Dancer Etlin as a Colorless Dagger Flyer. She doesn't really have the resistance of Lachesis, so she's not going to be able to support all that well. And she's mainly going to be stacking up her attack and speed. But even then, she's not going to be all that fast. And she does come with a decent weapon and Courtly Fan Plus, which does have half null follow up. But you can definitely try and upgrade her weapon to something like Clever Dagger, which does give you 30% damage reduction on foe's first attack. You can normally get Arcane Void in the Hall of Forms, so that is a weapon you can run later on. And for her special, again, Lethality is something you should be picking up. And Flared Sparrow is going to be the best Lottie skill so that you can get the pre-combat damage and also set up the Flame Terrain when she attacks. And Rock Slide Dance is also going to be a good support option for the slot base so that she can give the dot status to the target ally. And she can even run Wings of Mercy 4. And again, just like all of these Flying Dancers, Guidance 4 and Soaring Guidance are going to be the slots you to run. Unless you're talking about Lachesis, in that case, she can run Ploy, but Ethelin can only do that. So you have to run any of these warping skills to provide that kind of support. We're going to be getting a poll this month and whichever batch wins that poll, they're going to be getting a revival in May of 2024. And the batch that gets the least amount of votes is going to be eliminated. So you can click the link on the screen right now to check out my breakdown of Divine Codes 5. And make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as dancers against isolation of Mila. So that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.